Hello, Suzanne. Um, I think you're on mute, though. You, you might be mute. <laughs> we talked about it. There we, we go. About it. <laughs> That's okay. Hey, Bruce, it's live. It's been a long week, you know. It's been a really, really long week. It's, it, it's okay. Uh, I almost did it when we came back earlier. I had to look down, and I was like, "Am I I'm on?" <laughs> so I had to make sure I was on mute. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold on. <laughs> um no i love it we had real-time latency and then we had and then we had face <laughs> problems and it turns out it's always human error right and, yeah. <laughs> yeah well thanks um, for joining us suzanne um before we get here. started perhaps introduce yourself to our audience and, and what your role is at aws yeah i would love to um well it's a pleasure to be here and i lead the product marketing team for ai and machine learning at aws mm. oh okay wait hold on for a quick second, how was yesterday for you? Seems like it was pretty exciting. A lot of announcements. It was a great day for me and the team. And we, you know, really have been working for a while now, as you can imagine, on thinking about how yeah. to tell the AWS story around generative AI and thinking about how to enter the conversation in a, in a way that's constructive and really focused on what we do best. So uh, it, it was a great day. It was lovely to hear from so many um, people, how excited they were to partner with AWS on generative AI, and so there's a lot of things that I think um, you know are gonna gonna continue from from kind of that kickoff yesterday. I imagine a lot of our customers are also going to take a, advantage of it because now generative AI and ML technology is going to be more readily accessible to them. Yeah, absolutely. It's that's really the foundation of yesterday's announcement. It's all about the fact that we want to democratize access to generative AI and make it easy and seamless and simple for current and future customers to work uh, to work really to take advantage of this new technology quickly and, and do it with access to the best possible models that are out there and to do it really in a way that um, gets them started uh, with, with very little friction. Hmm. Yeah, talking about very little friction. There were there were a lot of terms I heard mm. yesterday and read about in the in the announcement. So because we have a wide range of people joining the show, maybe we should take a little step back. I'm I'm kind of assuming or hoping that perhaps a lot of people know what generative AI is, but there are other terms like you know foundation model that mm. to me yesterday. I mean, can we kind of briefly explain yeah. what like generative AI and foundation model is and where all the buzz is? Yeah, I actually think that's a really important piece of, of what we want to do and what you all do as, as advocates all the time is really try to demystify the technology and get under the covers and explain the terminology that now suddenly we're talking about at the dinner table, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I usually had a conversation about foundation models at the dinner table, but now that's kind of what's happening across across the world, really, which is kind of fabulous. Uh, for 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 geeks like us, so you know, it really a foundation model is a step is a different um, is a different animal. It's so much larger than any of the machine learning models that we've worked with in the past, and because of the scale that it has, it's really almost like a, it's called foundation model for a reason. It's it's a, it's a basically a, a baseline from which you can start to build many, many other applications. So it's much, much larger. It's a general purpose model. So it has an understanding of, of a much broader chunk of human knowledge, if you will. And so as a result of that, you can do many, many different things with it uh, way beyond uh, what you could have done with a specialized model in the past. And that's what makes it exciting because you can start from there and then build on top and, and go faster as a result. Yeah, and I, it's it's um, really explosive and really exciting and so exciting that I was on a phone call earlier today with someone, like not even talking about it. And they said, my mom and dad sent me two different independent text messages excited about the announcement for generative AI and ML that Werner and Swami were talking about yesterday. So um, well, think about why that's the case, right? Because if they're interacting with all the companies and the brands that they trust, and now those companies take advantage of generative AI to rethink their customer experiences, uh, they're going to actually have a much more 
personalized, customized, um, attentive uh, interaction with that company than they ever have had in the past. That means they're going to get their products faster. They're going to figure out, uh, you know, how, how to answer their their problem if they have a problem faster. Uh, and that's going to be the case both, you know, in, in interactions between companies and, and their customers. It's also going to be the case internally in companies. So think about all the reporting that has to get done, all the interactions that happen that take a lot of uh, repetitive work that yeah now you can really do as a, you know in in combination or in concert with these with these foundation models and, and generative AI and really drive a much faster turnaround time to for example create a unique customized approach to your daily activity reporting in a, in a financial firm and so you're suddenly um, really accessing all the wealth of knowledge of that company in a much faster way so you're enabling everyone to, to be more productive, to be uh, faster, and to do even more creative work, which is really what we want folks to do, right? We want to make them even more creative than they were before. We want to help them go even faster, and we want to help them do it with this body of knowledge that their company or their organization has already built up. So it's it's truly exciting and, and game-changing. Yeah, I'd like to drill into that, um, those use cases for a little bit, if we, if we can, because Obviously, in, in, in generative AI in, in the general public, we, we hear a lot about, you know, it writing essays for us or, you know, text or it's generating images. But are there any other use cases that are coming along that we couldn't do before now that we have this generative AI and the, all these foundation models? Yeah, I mean, it's absolutely. I mean, think about, especially, for example, in the developer world, um, uh, writing code, right? And, and I know you all will talk a lot more uh, later in the segment about Code Whisper, but that's one of the areas that's probably the most exciting because there is a lot of, I mean, not to mention, I mean, the speed of change in that space, the speed with which new approaches come uh, come online is so, so fast that it's almost, it's impossible to keep up, right? We're always, I mean, all of us are in any domain are always feeling like we're behind these days, right? So it always feels like I, a treadmill, right? Right, exactly. So you're always trying to catch up, catch mm -hmm. up, get the latest knowledge. And so imagine you had a companion who actually helped you do that mm -hmm. in a way that was constructive, that was on point, and that was collaborative. So it's not about replacing your work. It's really about doing something together and being more productive as a result. Almost like having a, a like you both, you're bantering, right? You're having a conversation, you're building off each other. And that's what, you know, Doug is going to show uh, in a bit with, with Code Whisper. So it's really, um, it's, it's really about augmenting the work. And so code... Just generation is a critical, critical uh, area. And, and in general, everything to do with, with development is a critical area and a critical use case that we're going to just see, you know, explode. Um, I, I do think some of this, you know, original content production is also really important. So thinking about generating text, generating images, thinking about how that's going to kickstart even more creative ideas out there, I think is also really important. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity in that space and, and we haven't even scratched the surface. So I think we'll see some really exciting uh, areas we're flipping right on the screen. Yeah, I know. It's just <laughs> we've got generative AI on the host. I don't know what's going on, but hey, it's live. <laughs> it's live. That's no, what happens. Think, you know, to the, to that point, like the more that we can use, maybe or leverage the generative AI to do the mundane, the heavy lifting, the, yeah. the dull stuff that you know that then frees up us to be to do the creative. Yeah, or, or be more creative. Totally. And, and I don't want to, you know, you don't have to label those types of work necessarily, but um, because, you know, sometimes through, through repetition, you know, you learn. So, it, but it is about that, that back and forth, that faster iteration, mm -hmm. and especially the access to the knowledge, because these foundation models have a different understanding of, of the knowledge that they've, that they've learned from. And it's a lot more contextual. It's, it's what makes you able to understand you know, the difference between uh, a mountain bike and a motorbike. And that's not something that in the past, you know, our models have been able to glean and humans readily understand because they understand context, they understand uh, whole bodies of text and knowledge. And these models are much more like that. Latency demo. Latency demo. Thing we've had before. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> no all, 
<laughs> All good. So we caught most of it. Basically, the difference between a mountain bike and a motorbike. And I imagine it's probably oh. intelligent enough to be able to say, like, here's the different, possibly the different size of bikes as well, or even colors well, of bikes and oh, getting man. the right product in people's hands, too, and really accelerating innovation. Well, and what I was trying to get at was more the context, right? So when you say the word bike, if it's out of context, it could be either of those things, is, right? right? Yeah. But these models understand context. So they can figure out why this, in this case, it's a mountain bike. And in this other case, it's a motorbike uh, because they are much more like us in the sense that they understand context and the connections between whole bodies of text. And so, you know, or whether it's a dinner table or an Excel table, you know, those are two different things, but they're both tables, right? So uh, in the past, it might've been harder for um, the AI to understand, you know, that, that contextual information. And in this case, it's, it's a whole different paradigm for, for interacting with the body of knowledge that, that's available to you under, underlying this model. Got it. That makes so much more sense without the latency. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, which is, this is the theme of the show today. <laughs> <laughs> so different question for us, but um, a lot of talk about the use cases and how there's context behind, you know, differentiating between an Excel data, uh, table or a dinner table. I, I wouldn't eat my dinner on an Excel <laughs> table, but I may, I may start to look at my data on my dinner table. But what are customers <laughs> asking for, for related to generative I, uh, AI? I love, how you, I love how you connected those dots. Um, you know, we heard a lot from customers about how they want to go faster with generative AI. And so we've really tried to listen to what the challenges are, because that, that's what we do, right? We work backwards from what we hear from our customers. And so the different things that we've heard from them is that they they really want access to a choice of, of models. They, they don't know yet every area where they're going to need generative AI. They're just aware that they need to leverage this new technology to transform their customer experiences. So we, we know that. And so we've heard from them that they really want choice and they want a way to access those foundation models that's easy. A lot of uh, CIOs are trying to understand, do I need to completely change the, the development team that I have to bring on all these new scientists who maybe are more familiar with this technology? So they really want a more straightforward way to get started with high performing foundation models to build new applications. Um, they also want it to not require them to completely change how they do development, right? They've set up really robust processes. They're, they're used to, um, you know, providing all the governance structures that are needed for their developers to operate safely, you know, in a, in a, and also keep everything related to the company's data private and, and confidential. So they don't, they don't want to have to completely upend all of their ways of working. Um, and then they really want to do things that are specific to their own company, right? So if you're a, a travel company or a healthcare company or a financial, you, you really, they want to build new applications that differentiate them within their field and they want to do it quickly. And so that has a lot of implications in terms of how to build a product with that in mind, because we want to really make sure that we're listening to their needs and providing them with tools that allow them to go faster. Hmm. Yeah, you mentioned the classic working backwards there, right? That, mm -hmm. that kind of everybody knows about. But you know, what what approaches are we taking to help them because these customers, you know, adopt or harness generative AI in their businesses? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, that, that's what the announcements yesterday really were about. They were about how we're thinking about this and how we want to help our customers uh, do, exa do exactly that. And, and one of the key elements of yesterday's story was around Amazon Bedrock, which is, which is a new service that's uh, in limited preview. And it allows you to access foundation models from AI21 Labs, Anthropic, and Stability AI, as, as well as Amazon, uh, through an API completely uh, seamlessly without needing to have, you know, a deep uh, understanding necessarily around machine learning or have any unique special skills related to that. So it's a serverless experience. You use it just like any of our other uh, AI services. It's, it's really easy to get started quickly and you can customize it as well. So you can customize the underlying models uh, privately and confidentially. So your data will not, will not go anywhere. It's staying within your virtual private cloud. And that, 
that's super important. And so um, in addition to that, you know, as you're doing this, this customization, as you're thinking about what applications you want to put into production, you can also use all the tools that you're used to using uh, on AWS. Uh, and that includes our, our machine learning portfolio. So all of the SageMaker tools, in particular uh, experiments, so comparing different um, um, performance of different models, for example, in context is something that you'll be able to do quite uh, quite readily. And that's exciting because you can do all that without having to worry about, oh my, do I have to spin up new infrastructure? Is that going to cost me a ton? And you can do all that pretty quickly. So it addresses that that working backwards that we were just talking about from, from the customer needs because it's really focused on allowing them to get to the the business outcome they want to achieve, uh, rather than uh, you know trying to learn um, a whole host of new uh, tools and techniques uh, specific to generative AI. Yeah, I really like that. That you know you yeah. can you can take advantage of this new stuff, mm -hmm. but using the stuff you already know. Right? Exactly, and that's because, part of it, right? Because, because, yeah, that's exactly the area, right? There's there's new stuff coming at you all the time in in machine learning and. We've done quite a few machine learning segments on on air over time, and I, every time I think I've just caught up and I'm kind of getting a handle on it, it leaps ahead again, right? So it's like, yeah. oh, I can still use all this stuff that I've kind of learned already. Mm -hmm. That's cool. I can go and experiment mm -hmm. with this a little bit now. Well, and, and that's kind of what what Swami and Werner were talking about, and I, I I hope folks watch the the conversation there because you know they're they're talking about how the speed is just gonna it's 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 increasing relentlessly, and so. Mm -hmm to keep up and to also be able to continuously swap in the latest models and see what else is coming down the pike. This is a way to do that without having to start from scratch every single time. Yeah. yeah. So there's a couple of questions in the chat, but before we get to those, um, you talked about the announcements this week and you talked about bedrock, but are there any other special announcements that you want to call out? Yeah, and yeah, absolutely. Because so we talked about Bedrock, right, which is a critical piece of, of what we're doing here. The other really, really critical piece is that yesterday we announced the, the general availability of some of our new uh, chips uh, that are specifically built for machine learning. And that's really critical because it, it provides our customers with the most cost-effective cloud infrastructure for ML and, and generative AI by extension. And so you have uh, AWS Trainium and AWS Inferentia in the latest instances on Amazon EC2 Inf2 instances, as well as Trainium 1N instances are, are available. And so you'll have um, uh, Gadi give an update about that in just a little bit. And so it's really exciting um, to see what's possible there and how the cost savings are just uh, you know, phenomenal. And, and that's only going to get more important, right? Imagine more and more applications will have uh, generative AI built in. And so as a result, you'll start to see uh, the need for more and more of this custom infrastructure to drive uh, the ability to scale. And that's what we're really focused on and have been for a while because we build um, ourselves in-house, right? We, we've been doing this uh, in-house for so many years, you know, 20 plus years. And so we've seen um, internally just how important it is to focus on the most cost-effective way to scale machine learning. And now our customers benefit from that, from that as well. I was super yeah, excited. Speaking of customers, mm. oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. Speaking of customers, we do have some customers in the chat who are asking questions, but I think one of them is bantering more towards Steve. Um, so I'm going to pull it up here on the screen. And AM, our good oh, friend over here, who's also an, <laughs> an on-air host, is, is kind of uh, jabbing Steve about use cases that we that was built yesterday. Steve, can yes. you tell us more about that, please? Yeah, yeah. AM and I had our own show yesterday called Code Corner, and AM is building a... Um, what, a trading card is it trading card collectible cards deck but he was using generative ai um through SageMaker, mm -hmm. admittedly with the older models not with the announcements from yesterday to actually build mm -hmm. the card oh. image and the description um okay that's this thing uh, i'm not sure i'm entirely with the project yet it's a it seems like an am special if you if you know what i mean <laughs> most most people watching this won't know what i mean by an am special but i would as an english person i would say he's off on one <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that translates. <laughs> I, I don't know either, but you know, I did want to call that one out because I saw it. Um, mm -hmm. Chander is here in the chat as well, and Chander has provided a link for everyone. So let me go ahead and throw that on the chat or on the screen. So an explainer video of Amazon Code Whisper is here, um, and uh, you, you talked about Code Whisper and how that's coming up in the future. So we'll kind of hold off what? on that, but. 
Well, we'll dive deep. You'll dive deeper on that, right? Because that's a third big yes. key announcement from yesterday. Um, and you know, it's it's free for for individual developers, and that is a huge, huge um, announcement for for us. Yeah. And seeing this um, leap forward for customers uh, and developers who are now able to you know have this interaction we were talking about before. Mm-hmm. So have a companion that's coding with them, which will drive their productivity. Uh, through the roof. And so we're really excited to see what they build and how much faster they build and how much faster they leverage Code Whisper's ability to build on AWS. So super yeah, exciting. Yeah. The the ability for maybe non-developers just getting started or even developers kind of kick off. Um, I can only imagine like a developer writer block and maybe overcoming Ooh. that writer block with some starter code that Code Whisperer can generate for someone. Um, maybe because it's it's an expert. Code Whisperer is an expert at knowing our AWS documentation. So it knows how to build based on the documents that we have publicly available. We're going to dive deeper into that in the future or in, a, in, in probably just a few minutes here, right? Yeah. yeah. And then last question that I can see that's flagged for us. Curious about the use cases that people are thinking about for generative AI. Are you able to talk to that? Yeah, it's. I mean, it's a great question, and and you know, I think we can share some of the additional uh, links there. And the, you know, there's so many different opportunities that that we already started talking about, whether it's uh, code generation or whether it's content generation. I mean, think about in marketing. I'm in marketing, right? So I've been thinking a lot about how this is going to change my own practice. Am I going to be able to generate copy for all kinds of, of whether it's social media or the web or email, I'm going to be able to generate that in an instant, much more um, in, a, in, a, in a much broader way than I ever have been before. And then we'll be able to think more creatively about other things that we could do in marketing. We can you know, free up time to do those other things. So the entire fields are going to shift uh, because of the availability of, of these tools. Uh, you can think about all kinds of uh, productivity tools also in, in an office uh, setting. If you know, go this meeting, for example, imagine we wanted to have a, a quick write up of it or make sure we were tracking all the things that we said we needed to follow up on in the midst of, of this conversation. So there's a lot of um, there's a lot of things that that we you know spend time on today that we can then leverage these models for in a way that will free us up to get to the good stuff. Yeah, simplifying the tasks and reducing the mundane efforts. That way we can actually focus on the interesting stuff that that drives our businesses forward for our customers. Absolutely. Yep. All for that. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Well, Suzanne, I think we're getting close to the end of our time okay. here. Um, we'll move on to our, for our next segment. Um, before okay. we, you, we leave you, is there anything you want to leave our audience with? Um, you know, I would just say, you know, go go build, benefit from the flexibility that all these new tools offer you, um, mm-hmm. and 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 trust the the cloud that um, focuses on really secure, allowing you to securely customize these foundation models for your own purposes, and think about how you're going to set yourself up for ongoing experimentation, so you can keep up with the pace of change that that's heading our way. Um, and and really um, try to um, build out what those specialized use cases are going to be for your industry so that you can take your business to the next level. Cool. All right. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Really, thanks thanks so really much. Appreciate you all and have fun in the rest of the show. Will do. Bye. See you.